Hello everybody, welcome to Red Tool House. Today, Kelly and I are standing out in the woods on this beautiful fall day. It's low 50s, love it. So um, what we wanna talk about is five reasons why you should consider buying sloped land. Everybody thinks that the ideal farmland is flat, and we did too. But today we're gonna to tell you why we think that there are many benefits to finding property that's sloped. Yeah, so as you can see behind us, we're on our uh, north ridge with the south facing, and you can see the nice gradual slope we have. The watershed and valley is that way. So let's come with us as we go to different spots on the property and show why we think slope land is beneficial when you're looking for property for your homestead. You're not going to the mud, are you? Okay, I think the first benefit, and this is no particular order with these five points, but the first is water management. So you can see behind me here, where the slope, there's a watershed that comes down and uh, the water was fanning out pretty badly and actually tearing up my road. So um, there's a spring, there's a little bit of a slip. So getting in here with a piece of equipment was able to fix that and of course get the water draining. So with water on a farm or homestead, you wanna to try to hold on to as much as possible without causing erosion or without causing slips. Um, in my experience, what I've seen with flatland is if you have a section of water that you don't want in a certain area, it's a bit harder to get it out of there. You have to do French drains, you have to do ditches, um, those uh, really big irrigation ditches you see along the sides of row cropping and things like that to, to drain the water off. Uh, with a lot of slope, of course, it could just make a subtle, a subtle embankment or a subtle swale can move the water completely in a different direction. So in this situation, we drained all of the spring water off of the road by just simply cutting a small ditch, the spring water goes into it, comes down and collects into the culvert, and then goes through the culvert to get under the road. So by capturing the water coming out of the mountain right here at the spring, it now collects in front of the road on the uphill side of it, fills up, and of course drains across into the culvert. Now my road would be smoother if I could get this, this clay is still drying out so we can get it knocked down. But that really allows me with minimal effort to take water out of an equation and get it out of the way. Now, if I was really in a situation where I wanted to channel it elsewhere, then that slope's gonna allow me to, challenge, uh, to channel it much, much better. Oh, I think the dog's going for a swim. Mother, <laughs> what are you doing? No! Tooby, no. Who buys a white dog on a farm? <laughs> Another benefit of land with slope is that gravity is your friend. So if you're catching water on the upper end of the slope, you can utilize that for many options on the lower end of the slope. So I'm not sure that you can see it here behind me, but down low in the cleared off area of our retreat, um, we have been thinking about doing water catchment and we most likely will do water catchment for our bathhouse. Yeah, and so the, the question, if you've watched some of our videos where we talk about the retreat, talking about do we utilize solar power with 12 volt pumps to provide pressure for the shower, for the toilet, all that type of stuff. But what Kelly and I have gone back and forth on, where we're standing here, as you can see again, down all the way down here where you see brown, that's the bare dirt of where we excavated, yeah, that's about 50 to 60 feet lower in elevation. So if we were to come up here on this bench, and I'm gonna turn around to show you, <clears throat> So here's a nice flat bench that we can drive the side by side to the tractor very easily because we've got roads that come up here. So if I had a small roof line that went into a IBC tote or multiple totes or a cistern or whatever, then you look at 60 feet in elevation relief. And if, I'm, if I remember correctly, that's for each four feet of drop, that's one pound of pressure. So uh, do the math there for me. 60 divided by four, Kelly, what is that? <laughs> 
15. Right, so 15 PSI would be plenty for a shower, for filling up a toilet, those type of things. Now, some of you guys that like the pressure sprayer showers like you like, you maybe need a little more pressure, but we have, we have a lot of options with just capturing water, as Kelly said, high on that slope and then utilizing it lower on that slope just because we're gonna build pressure and we can channel it wherever with just simple hoses and lines. Probably the best utilization I've ever seen of that is on Joel Salatin's farm where he has an impoundment higher. So he's got this nice pond higher up on the ridge and has literally has his pastures plumbed. So there's black pipe, I think it's maybe one inch or two inch black pipe that's plumbed all the way down the spines of the ridge down through his pastures. And I, I believe by the time you get to the bottom of his barn, I think he has 88 PSI, something like that, something crazy. So he can plumb, or he can fill up water troughs anywhere on his pasture simply because he can tap into that line. So a lot, a lot of benefit there that would require you, if you're on flat and you were irrigating or you're pumping water, you'd spend a lot of money in pumps and gas and electric to do that. So gravity could be your friend in that situation. So another benefit to sloped property, sloped land, is the view. Um, I like the diversity and, and the beauty of the mountains and um, wide open sky. So I like to be on the top of the mountains most of the time. So all we need to do is punch a hole in the canopy and we've got great views. So while Kelly likes big sky and wide open views, I love the fact for aesthetics that slope produces some of these little alcoves and these little cozy places. So this was one of our spots where we used to do campfires all the time before we started moving back to the retreat. And it's just the slopes make this little pocket, a little valley, a little watershed here that we could hide in and, and do our campfires. And you really felt like you had tons and tons of privacy here in the middle of our 100 acre woods. So uh, really neat the uh, benefits slope gives you, whether you want to be wide open and exposed or you want to be tucked away and hidden. Wide open. <laughs> hey, this is my segment. You did your segment already. <laughs> So another benefit of sloped land is microclimates. And as soon as Troy stops pounding these blackberries, he can give you an explanation of what that is. All right, so as Kelly mentioned, an example of microclimates, excuse my crudeness, is right here at the house, this is southwest facing. So all of this brick, of course, heats up tremendously. In the summer, it's a bit of a drag, but the benefit we're taking advantage of right now, hey, are you getting in my blackberries? <laughs> I, b I believe the video script the video script says Troy was eating blackberries not Kelly. <laughs> Anywho, the um, the benefit we're taking advantage of right now is you can see these things are still in bloom. I don't know if you can see the blooms on that, but it's mid October, and these things are still in bloom because they're taking advantage of all this solar radiation. Now, if we were just down over the hill, the microclimate would be totally different because that becomes a huge frost pocket down there in the valley. And we can explain, we'll go down there and explain the benefits of that and how we can utilize that to help us with growing. So real quick, if you're unaware of what a microclimate is, it's just simply a little pocket or a little section on a larger piece of land or any land that has its own climate due to topography and other elements that, that allow it to either retain more heat, retain more cold, retain more moisture, so forth. So an example of a microclimate that retains cold and moisture would be this area here on the edge of our chicken pasture where we have our pigs. Now, if I didn't have pigs right here, this would be a great place, especially against that stone face you see back there in the summertime where we could raise cool weather greens. So our broccolis and spinaches and all those type of things that like colder weather so they don't bolt, you could grow those well here. They'd still get some sunlight in the middle of the summer but it would stay much, much cooler. So slope allows you to have and find those pockets where you've got cooler areas, moister areas, hotter areas, dry areas, and use that to your advantage when you're growing food. Speaking of growing food, look at this. See how green that pasture is? We've been here 20 years, and this is really the first time, first year that we've dedicated the entire year to rotating chickens longer. We normally do our pasture broilers here, but that's only for eight weeks out of the year. But we're using the Coupe de Ville over here. That's the mobile egg laying coop to move around. They have just absolutely supercharged this pasture. And it's just amazing this late in the year how green that is. Good looking stuff. 
So another benefit of slope land is something that people have been taking, taking advantage of for centuries. And that is when it comes to structures. So here behind me, you see the old farm cellar from the previous uh, family that used this as a farm. And before we cut our driveway to go up here to build the new house, this was tucked into the side of the mountain, kind of chiseled in. You can see the, the, some of the rock that still exists is old sandstone that was cut out of the side of the mountain and it made for a great cellar for storage of food. But when it comes to dwellings, it's not just cellar and food storage. You see now with all, a lot of this alternative housing where they utilize the thermal energy that's in the ground and you can have these embankment houses, you can have these underground houses, these guys that do shipping containers in the ground. Um, there's all kinds of neat things, hobbit houses, that you can really take advantage of that slope. If you're on totally flat ground, it could still be done, but there had to be tons of earthworks to build that up and get that put in place. Again, with here, you chisel in the side of the mountain where you really get access to that bedrock, you get that 55 degree temperature very, very quickly without having to do a lot of work to it. Another benefit in looking for sloped land is that most likely it's going to be cheaper than looking for flat tillable acreage. Now, the steeper the slope, the more difficult the challenge may become. I don't know where I dropped my keys. <laughs> yeah, so obviously something as simple as running fence line or finding your keys you dropped in the woods can, can make things a little tricky. We've talked about on our channel how even farrowing on these steep slopes is tough because piglets roll downhill and die. So there, there are some challenges with slope, but it's all about the amount of slope that you have. And I think one thing you have to consider if you're going to look at slope land is how it faces uh, the sun. So here in the northern hemisphere, a north-facing steep slope like we have behind us, this is our south ridge that faces north, if that was only the land that we had to work with, then that would be a really big challenge because right now until mid-March, there's no direct sunlight that's hitting the surface of that ground. So obviously Southern Hemisphere, it's the opposite direction, but that's something you really need to take into consideration if you're looking at land, then make sure that the slope is facing somewhat south so you can take advantage of that. It's your dog hiding in the grass over there. <laughs> Golden retriever in his natural element. <clears throat> Well, I hope you all found this video somewhat useful. Kelly and I are just enjoying a nice walk out in the woods on this beautiful day. I just had a lot of rain, so there's not a lot we can get done. That's why the dog is muddy. So uh, comment below what you guys think. Maybe throw in some extra benefits that you see with slope land. Those of you flatlanders, tell us why we're wrong. All right, take care, everybody.